Shalom family, it's your man Elia, and welcome to Sectarian Wisdom, and as usual, I am a wise, wealthy, rich, celestial being that is loved by the Most High Creator. Let's get it, family. All right, family, we're jumping back, finally, into the culvert again. We're picking up on chapter two. Oh, it says chapter two, but um, remember, it's like different, I guess different time frames or something. Like, we've read more than two chapters, but, you know, it's... um. How do I call it? It's like different acts. Like Act 1 might be one. Act 1 is four chapters. Act 2 will be five chapters. But each time, you know, it starts from chapter 1, chapter 2. Act 1 is like chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4. And then Act 2 will be chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, chapter 4, chapter 5, chapter 6, so on. And then Act 3, you know, so on and so on. Anyway. Oh, I didn't even put it up in the, uh, hold on, let me, uh, get my, uh, my professionalism ready gotta be professional at least somewhat because I already know you know obviously I don't make the best videos they're not the most pretty but you know I try to do something and it'll still get better over time as I've said but right now I'm just kinda you know anyway alright family so let's get into it let me uh oh my bad show you the page we're starting right here at the bottom page 31 chapter 2 Eloma Eloma, ooh, I'm not gonna lie, Eloma sound kind of attractive, I kind of like that name, like, like, ooh, Eloma, I don't know if you sound like somebody, you know, mm, I, never mind, let me not go there, I didn't, <laughs> alright, let's go, chapter 2, Eloma, it came about that the sons of children of God mated with the daughters of the children of men, who knew well the ways of men, and were not reserved. The covenant had been broken, and strange women were taken into the households, some even as wives. But though the daughters were lesser women, the sons were wonderfully big and mighty fighting men. These new people came out of the wastelands and crossed to Kithermis, which they divided in three parts between them and there were rivers on the boundaries. Well, let me read that again. These new people came out of the wastelands and crossed to Kithermis, which they divided in three parts between them. And there were rivers on the boundaries. This was when the years of man's life were lessened because he became fully earth sustained. But he remained full of vigor through filled with hostility particularly towards those who loved. Oh, let me read that. What did that mean? This was when the years of man's life were lessened because he became fully earth-sustained, but he remained full of vigor, though filled with hostility, particularly towards those who loved. Towards those who loved. Hmm. To the east was the land of... This is my... This, this is as far as I read in this book, by the way, family. I mean, I, before when I first got it, I skipped ahead and read maybe like two or three chapters in the middle of the book. But we're not going to be there anytime soon. So, this is my first time reading it with you. To the east was the land of Ubal, which was mountainous. And the Ubalites were herdsmen. Westward was the land of Chasen, and it joined Ubak on the north. Southward were the land of Uta and the land of Cayman, whose peoples dwelt on the plains and tilled the soil. Some from the households of the children of God went into the lands of Chasen and gave the people laws and taught them to build with brick. Neter, Neter and Baletshuram Hold on, let me pronounce his name. Neter and Balet Shuraman. Balet, Balet Shuraman. It's B A L E T S H E R A M A M. So I'm just going to pronounce it the best I can, best way I can pronounce it. Neter, Neter and Balet Shuraman, the sons of Enarnuri. Oh, Neter. And Balisharam, <laughs> Neter 
and Belesherman, the sons of Enonari, taught them writing and set their letters on a pillar in Herak. In Kilgal, son of Ninduka, built Kiridor, which stands between two rivers. Then came the lengthening of years, when the time of sowing was confused, and seed died in the ground. In those days, Enos came up out of Chasen, and spoke for the God of the children of men. In those days, there were many having the blood of the children of God, who inclined their ears towards his words. Let me read that again. In those days, there were many having the blood of the children of God, who inclined their ears towards his words. For they thought the great God of their fathers had abandoned them. Therefore, the enlightening word of God came to Eloma. Eloma, daughter of Kehema, heard the voice of God and was carried into the wilderness, unto a place where there was a cave and clear running waters. And she dwelt there for seven years. Eloma had three sons, and they all heard the voice of God and walked with him. Her firstborn son was Heriana, and he carried the word of God to the children of God who dwelt in the Northlands, for they had forgotten his ways. He married Didi, daughter of a great king, and became an even greater king. He had many sons who all became kings among men of renown. Yahama, her second-born son, carried the word of God to those who dwelt towards the sun rising in Manum. Her third-born son carried it to those towards the sun setting. When the ear of the spirit was opened in Eloma, she returned to her people and became the interpreter of God. In the days when some men left to dwell among the children of men, others in the days when some men left to dwell among the children of men, others came to Eloma and said, Behold, men leave and we become weak, while the children of men become strong. Can this be the will of our father? Then Eloma called upon God, and he heard her cry and said unto her, Let your spirit be at peace, for things happen as they will. It is the grain being winnowed from the chaff. It is always easier for men to follow the ways of the flesh than the ways of the spirit. Yet the deeper man descends into a veil of earthly things. The harder the climb out to the heights of glory, the harder the climb out to the heights of glory. A generation to go down, ten generations to rise again. Man must struggle or degenerate, but the path of pleasure is pleasant, while the path of progress is beset with pain and strife. But the path of pleasure... Man must struggle or degenerate, but the path of pleasure is pleasant, while the path of progress is beset with pain and strife. Man, sometimes I wonder, no, I know, that we have so much technology, we've become lazy, and we've really, we've lived so blessed for so long, even though we, a lot of times, we really don't admit it, or we take it, we really take for granted the blessings we have, but it's weakened us. And I mean, don't me wrong, it's nice to live in peace, it's nice to to not have anyone trying to hurt you all the time. It's nice to be able to get food when you want it. But at the same time, at, at what cost at times? Because when I look at society and the degradation of our people at this point, it's... Mm. Anyway, God said to Eloma, his servant, Behold, I have been good to my children. They have been given everything that is pleasant. Everything has come easily to their hand. The lot of the children of men is more harsh, and yet they prosper. Childish things are expected from a child, but when it grows up more is anticipated. Yet still my children come to me as children. God then said, Go, return to the place from whence you came and remain there for seven years. And she did so. The seven years passed and Eloma returned to the people. And behold, the fertile fields were unsown. The water channels were dry. And there was desolation in the midst of the waters. Man, that almost kind of sounds like today was happening with, you know, especially in the West Coast, a lot of the water's drying up. 
we're having the issues now with um food and them talking about food shortages hey as as the word says there's nothing new under the sun family Eloma sought among the fields and when she came upon the habitations her heart was rent apart for she saw the daughters of the children of God consorted with the sons of the children of men and were become unlike true women then Eloma said to them wherefore has this thing come about and they answered behold men came from out of the wilderness and our men were like sheep before wolves see even now they labor within a pen of servitude Eloma then went unto the men and said wherefore has this thing come about and they answered her behold the God of the children of men is unlike ours a God of battles and we were delivered into their hands you know what this also sounds like family and some of you may not be in the red pill but and like I said I don't agree with everything a red pill and that's not one of those things we're trying to I'm not trying to please anybody I really don't because a, a lot of times in this world people mix the Word of God or whatever you want to call the Word of God or the wisdom of the ancients with their own pleasure and that's what I see in red pill I believe in I, I like a lot of what red pill says because it's biblically based but I also see how men in their flesh mix a lot of the red pill with their own desires in their own folly like the word says beware of the leaven of the Pharisees you know um, no beware the yeah beware the leaven of the Pharisees that's the same thing in red pill they sit there and they take God's word they take what is from the Creator and they mix their own desires in it so then that's why you have people who hate red pill like they can sit there and agree with a lot of it but then once you hear these men in their flesh spout their ignorance in certain parts it's like man you you totally but then as that's basically what we're reading now that's that's the nature of men you know and basically I see this is like when men have this argument about women joining the military or now how the world is kind of turning the mil well the US government is making the military very weak by these new allowances they're making for certain situations and all it's doing is weakening our military to one day guess what someone's going to walk right in and walk right over us because our military is no longer at the strength that it should be it no longer has the discipline it did because it's like man i don't know but basically that's what i see it's our men have been weakened our men have been turned into women and our women have been turned into men it's crazy man Wherefore has this thing come about? And they answered her, Behold, the God of the children of men is unlike ours, a God of battles, and we were delivered into their hands. Then Eloma was heavy of heart, and called upon God, saying, Behold the plight of your children. And God heard her and answered, I am not indifferent for their suffering, for their sufferings are my sufferings. They are not under the whips of men, but under the flail of God. The grain is being separated from the chaff. They toil not under the blows of men, but under the hammer of God. They are not imprisoned, but are upon an anvil. I am not the God of battles, not the God of nations, not even the God of men. I am the God of souls, the keeper of the treasures of eternity. I have not turned away from my children. My children have turned away from me, disobeying my laws. This cry will echo down throughout the generations of man. My God, why have you deserted me? And it will come from those who have deserted their God. This sounds a lot like in Deuteronomy. Um, I think it's Deuteronomy 28, I believe, when it talks about the curses that will come upon the tribes of Israel because they sinned against the Most High Creator. Like the Most High told, I believe it was Abraham or Moses, when he said, um, know that your people will be in slavery for 400 years. Or was that Jacob? It was one of them three that God told that. Or he told it to all three of them. Arise. Go seek. Arise. Matter of fact, I want to bring that up. If anybody is aware who's listening to this, if you're aware of the rapper um, Kanye West, not that I'm big on this person and whatever, but I remember a time a few years back when a lot of people were mad at him because he said that people of color chose to be in slavery. But if you have the knowledge, if you, if you read the word, if you actually take time to read and study esoteric things, you know, occultist things, that reading, you know, knowledge from the past, technically Kanye West is right. 
people of color or their ancestors chose slavery by the way they acted, by the things they did, because if they had followed the Most High diligently the way they should have, then they would have not been open to attack. They would have not been open to be conquered by other tribes. Some people might take that as harsh. And if you're mad by what I say, look, that's on you because you don't have the understanding. You didn't read now. There, I will say this. Some of the atrocities that happened during slavery, because even the Bible talks about how a master should treat their slave. Some of the things that, and the Bible speaks about this too. Some of the things that the slavers did to the slaves, they went overboard. Just because the creator allowed you to take a certain people into slavery doesn't mean you have the right to rape and murder them. You know, steal from them all the time. Do all type of horrific things. Maybe in the beginning stages when the people... Because obviously most people aren't going to just let you take them into slavery without a fight. So in the beginning there's that war. But after the war comes down, the overly excessive torture and things of that nature should cease. And it's not to say that the Most High wants slavery to happen. But when you understand the Most High, you understand the Word, you understand why certain things happen. And then most of the time, like he said, it's not that the that he is really doing this. The people did it to themselves. It's not God doing it. God just allows it. He allows men, the Creator allows men to put themselves in this in situation. I remember the military, when all the time, you know, one of the things our NCOs would say, we're always going to give you enough rope to hang yourself. You don't have to hang yourself with the rope. But nine times out of ten, especially young soldiers, you guys are going to take the rope, you're going to take the leeway we gave you, and you're going to hang yourselves. And we can't turn around and blame the higher-ups or give them because they gave us freedom or gave me this. Like, no, you did this. So, anyway, I'm going to keep going. So, you can take what I said, you know, take it or leave it, you know, um... I would say, instead of getting mad if, if I offended anybody, take time to meditate it. Meditate on it. Read your Bible. Get some understanding. Anyway. Arise, go seek among the people, and you will find a maiden who is pure at heart. But she is mocked and degraded by being made a swine attendant. Take her with you and go to Shinara. Guard her well, for she is the daughter of a new Doni. Eloma saw among the people and found Nanu, maid of the morning, and they went into Shinara. The voice of God came to Eloma in Shinara, saying, This is the way things shall be with those who aspire to godhood. They must follow, excuse me, family, they must follow only the paths which I have shown through the words of my interpreters. The unfolding spirit residing in those who have the blood of the children of God. Hold on. The unfolding spirit residing in those who have the blood of the children of God. And the greatness that dwells in men shall be magnified in the blood of their children. Their wisdom shall be greatly multiplied. If the tie of blood be strong. As good wine becomes bad if diluted. Over much so is greatness in the blood of man. There is a virtue in the blood of those whose forebears were the children of God. And if two people having this blood marry, then this virtue is increased in their children. So it is greater than either parent. There is a law of inheritance from which no man is exempt. For man is governed by the laws of earthly creatures as well as by greater laws. Is not the best ram chosen to sire the new flock? So let women choose the best among men that they can and let men so let women choose the best among men that they can and let men choose the best among women and they who heed my words will know which is the best let the truly great ones rule God said the creative words remain on this side of the veil but their echoes resound on your side the real remains the real remains here but its reflection is there. The real remains here, but its reflection is there. That, that, that to me, family, that, that sounds like what they're explaining is the difference is how, if you watch my other videos, and also how it, it's explained in this book, and it's explained in 
the um, also the book of knowledge, the keys of Enoch, that everything starts in the spirit. Everything that you see in the physical started first in the spirit. Everything in the physical is an extension of the spirit. So that's what it's, it, to me, what is explaining right here. God said the creative words remain on this side of the veil, but their echoes resound on your side. The real remains here, but its reflection is there. Creation is my mirror, though it is not without distortions. I have created in spirit and in matter. My thoughts have ranged from the unseeable smallest to the incomprehensible largest. My greatest thoughts form substance for the spirits of the sons and daughters of earth. Truth and justice, perfection of beauty and goodness remain with me, and these you can know on earth only by their reflection. In the universe of truth, all things are free from illusion and are seen in reality, but on earth even the reflection is, is distorted. I have created light and call it substance. It is illuminated within by the light of an ever-present love potential. Well, let me read that again. I have created light and called it substance. It is illuminated within by the light of an even of an ever present okay hold on let me read it again. i have created light and called it substance it is illuminated within by the light of an ever present love potential men call on many gods though above all there is but one men call on many gods though above all there is but one yet whatever they call me i will hear them for i am the god above names the god embracing all names Whatever men believe, it if it serves good to serve, if it serves good, it serves God. Hmm. For I am the God above names, the God embracing all names. Whatever men believe, if it serves good, it serves God. But gold necklaces are not for sheep, and outward forms of worship must suffice for the spiritually undeveloped. The rituals of men may often be empty ceremonials, but they may also guard the great mysteries behind them. For I am the God above names. Oh, I, that's what I want to speak on, family. That kind of goes back into like now, you know, a lot of people, like for instance, when I was still a Christian and still, you know, studying and, and going through, you know, going through the Bible first, one day, you know, studying, I, I found out Jesus' name is Yahusha or Yahawashai or, or whatever different names. And I remember I got very militant in it and I was like, his name isn't Jesus, it's Yahusha. Forgetting the fact that I grew up on the name of Jesus. And it was only through that name and through the grace of the, the creator that I even found my way to even reading the Bible. You know, and we have to understand, family, that the way we speak is a lower form of existence. It's a lower form of communication compared to the spiritual realm. Like the word says, who knows you better than the creator? Who knows your heart more than the creator? So whether you're saying Jesus or Zeus or Jesus or Yahusha, Yahawashai, the creator knows your heart. And if your heart is truly righteous, if you truly have, as he was saying, good intentions, no matter what you say God's name is, if you're speaking to the most high creator, the one who has a set of laws and, and Yahushua gave, like I said, the two greatest laws, love the creator with all your heart and do unto others as you have them do unto you. If you're a person who truly follows this, no matter what name you call the creator, whenever you call the, the creator in your heart, our father, our mother, whatever you want to call the creator, knows who you're talking to. They, the creator knows. So whether it's Jesus, Yahushua, Yahweh Shai, Buddha, um, Allah, whatever. He knows who you're talking to. So I just want to put that out there. And once again, look at the actions. Like, like it says, um, what is the fruit of the tree? You know, if the tree is evil, the fruit's going to be evil. If the tree is righteous, then the, tree, the, free, the fruit is going to be good. It's going to be righteous fruit. So, you know, don't get so hung up on physical words. If a man seeks to enter my presence by prayer and says, God grant me this or give me that, 
the things will be neither granted nor given unless it be for his spiritual good or benefit another I am no huckster bargaining blessings in exchange for worship nothing man that kind of that hit me that kind of hit me like in a way like man is that why a lot of my prayers have been answered which in a way i get it because you know it's like they say god gives you what you need before you need it or i've heard people say you know talk about how the reason you know some things you can pray for come really quick and then some things will take longer it's because there's some things that you ask god for god's already gave it to you he's been waiting for you to ask for it so if you ask for something that doesn't come more so this is, once again explains to me it's not for you and even though you might be mad well i want it but the creator sees something greater a bigger picture that you don't that this thing might cause you to fall away from him or cause you undue suffering that you can't see at this moment anyway nothing man can nothing man can give can add to what i have okay hold on i am i i am no huckster bargaining blessings in exchange for worship nothing man can give can add to what i have also men do me little honor when they fail to recognize that I am above concern for mere bodies which decay and fall apart when the enlivening spirit leaves them. Yet man is but man. Know that I am God of understanding and compassion. If man cries out to me in genuine stress and suffering, he will not go unrelieved and comforted. Yet understand that suffering and sorrow are the lot of man that he may become man god there is also the great law to which man must conform there are the intricacies of ined vadu to be unwoven and the challenging paths of destiny and fate to be followed too often the price to be paid for things too often the price to be paid for things done or not done is pain and suffering sorrow and distress but where would but where would be the benefit to the debtor were I to wipe out such debts yet will I see that never by ev even a single grain yet will I see that never by even a single grain will they exceed that which is absolutely necessary and just on earth joy and gladness will always outweigh pain and sorrow earth is earth take it as you find it do not expect to find heavenly things there it is a place of tuition and the purpose of life is learning all things of earth are limited and mortal immortality will not be found there when the things of earth have fulfilled their hidden purposes each passes away returning to the dust from whence it came behold in the days to come truth shall be unfolded to all people revealed in a degree and manner which will accord with their needs and capabilities it will be passed on from generation to generation and from man to man the purity of its flame will accord with the quality of the oil of spirituality with which it is fed and replenished hence there will be many differing degrees of purity and revelation the food which one man enjoys may sit heavily on the stomach of another yet it would be foolish to say that the food enjoyed by one should become the food of all so it is with the spiritual things which men believe i will not send prophets that sounds like you know like it says in the bible don't judge a man by what he eats you know don't say that what you know is it's not what goes in your mouth that is that is dirty it's what comes out i will not send prophets nor will i appoint spokesmen but such will arise through their own efforts and enter into conscious union with me they will point the way which will be followed by the spiritually sturdy both others less strong in spirit must take a slower path and many will advance only by faith and service by justice and kind and kindliness toward others the spark of divinity in man generates inspiring dreams which will ever lure him onward and upward yet the road is long the journey wearying and often unpleasant man has an ex man has un no oh, i had a brain fart man has unnecessarily encumbered himself he has enshrouded his spirit 
under a winding sheet of earthly passions. With this great eye blinded by indulgence and vice, and his spirit corroded by corruption, his fallible senses only are left to him, and these deceive him into believing the mortal vehicle is his total being. I want to add something to that family and this is um a description I've used to explain to people like I say imagine your soul right your spirit and your body is like a filter you know like the filters you see people put in like your air conditioners you change every now and then so imagine your soul is a filter within your body so every time you sin and every time you do something to go against the word of the most high every time you do something to hurt others every time you do something that is detriment to your soul your spirit like i said is like that filter at first it's white it's clear it's pure but over time it becomes dark and dirty and dingy because of all the negativity because of everything you've put on it and after a while you're so deep into the world into the lust of the flesh you're so deep in in sin in in anger and hate and jealousy and envy and all this stuff that you cease to hear the voice of God that you cease to see the reality of the creator around you that you cease to be who you were born to be in the spiritual realm because you ha because at that point like I said your filter is dirty and it needs to be changed but you can't change your soul but what you can do is at that time that I will call that more so a, a purification you need to start cleansing yourself and you can only do that by reading the word walking in the word living it you know not just thinking about it not you know not just reading it yes reading is a big part studying it is a big part but by fasting by praying by walking as you by walking the talk that you speak by living by example you know this is how you start to clean your um your temple you start to clean your filter but if you don't take the time you know you just you're look you're just getting dirtier and dirtier and like i said just like with a dirty filter right what happens the dirtier it gets less clean air comes out it, it, it'll even start affecting like the cool air it'll start affecting the hot air it starts blocking same thing like I said the soul the more the dirtier your soul is the darker it is the harder it is to hear from the Creator the harder it is to see the truth anyway I just want to throw that out there affliction and decay are now the lot of man and he has passed into a long, dark night of ignorance. Now only by journeying the long and painful road of earthly experience can his soul be cleansed and awaken to the realization of the glory within him. Man may conceive, man may conceive me as he will, and it will be well. I am not a God of pettiness. I don't think that says petty. That's pettish. I am not a god of pettishness. I'm pretty sure that's the same thing as pettiness, though. As I brought forth the creation, so shall he bring forth the revelations of his God unto you. Eloma, my child, I grant the keys of communion and union. Then Eloma went out among the people and taught them about their creator in this manner. I bring you the soul whispered words of God, the eternal tower of strength, the fathomless ocean of compassion. He has hung the earth in the void, surrounding it with nothingness, yet by his power it remains in its appointed place. He veils his glory behind the shield of illusion, lest it overpower the spirits of men. He is obscured by the dark cloud of mortal ignorance. He is the inspirational spirit ever entering the hearts of man striving to arouse them to reach out towards greatness and achievement he has molded the sky above us and bedecked it with splendor and awesome beauty he taught the stars their song of joy and the winds their wondrous music all the widespread earth proclaims his creativity while the high vaults reveal his skill and handiwork his messages go out to men not in the speech of men, but in wordless whispers to their hearts. His finger prescribes a course. Oh, matter of fact, I want to say that his messages go out to men, 
not in speech of men, but in wordless whispers of their hearts. In other words, family, that that's another reason. Well, like I was saying earlier with your, as your spirit, you know, I gave the example of your spirit being like a filter. The the spirit, the word, um, the voice of the Most High is very low. Not to say that the Most High is, or Creator is timid or scared, but it's for a reason. The voice is low for, for, for a reason. It's like a whisper. And if your soul is dirty, if your mind and your body is full of so much chaos and evil and just, just negativity, you're not going to be able to hear the voice of the Creator. So that's why you, you work on yourself. That's why you go down a narrow path. That path it has a lot of peace in it, a lot of calmness, a lot of quiet, a lot of taking time to study, to reflect, a lot of time to taking to um, meditate. And over time, this quiet, not only does it cleanse and clean your soul, your filter of your soul, but like I said, it quiets you down altogether. So in time, you're able to hear the spirit of the creator. You're able to hear that quiet voice in the back of your mind, in your heart, in your spirit. Because you have, but you have to put the work in first, family. The humbleness, the meekness, the walking, walking in action. You know, and, and I got hold on. I got a number. I got to read this number real quick, family. Okay. He taught the stars their song of joy in the winds their wondrous music all the widespread earth proclaims his creativity while the high vaults reveal his skill and handiwork his messages go out to men not in speech of men but in wordless whispers to their hearts his finger prescribes a course for the fertilizing waters which nourish the desolate sands his finger prescribes a course for the fertilizing waters which nourish the desolate sands, making tender buds burst from burst forth from the hold on, I'm read that again. His finger prescribes a course for the fertilizing waters, which nourish the desolate sands, making tender buds burst forth from the dead oil, from the dead soil. Oh, that okay, his fingers prescribe a course for the fertilizing water. The fertilizing water is the wisdom, family, which nourishes the desolate sands making tender buds burst forth from the dead soil the tender the desolate sands are, are us or people who don't hear or listen to the voice of the most high who don't accept the wisdom of the most high and live according to that wisdom the soft waters caress the ground and pastures arise to become the habitation of great flocks and herds the soft waters caress the ground and pastures arise to become the habitation of great flocks and herds the rose unfolds its beauty to honor him, and the woodbine delights him with perfume delivered upon the wind. The cornfields bow in humility, then wheat stalks raise upward in praise. The trees spread wide their worshiping branches, and the barley heads whisper together of his sun-given bounty. He is the fount fountainhead of all life the overseer of the fertilizing waters and the captain of the stars. Men stand beneath the great dome of the night skies. Men stand beneath the great dome of the night skies and are overawed by the work of their architect and by the bright mysteries displayed in such a pattern of beauty. They become dismayed at their own smallness but are reassured by his words, which have come down to them from ancient times. God has crowned man with life and set the scepter of intellect in his hand. He has given him the flail of mastery over all other living creatures and set him on the throne of creation. He, di he disciplines us when young and stretches out a welcoming hand when we near the end of our life's journey. He accompanies men on their pilgrimage along the road of life, mitigating their, mitigating their misfortunes and rejoicing with them in its pleasant surprises. He balances the lives of all men so they continually encounter conditions and situations 
met for them. Or it says, or meet for them. They continually encounter conditions and situations. Meet for them. I think it means meant for them, but it's spelled M-E-E-T. The widespread mysteries, the widespread mysterious heavens are his throne and bountiful earth his footstool. No structure man could build would contain him. Did he need a residence? No place built by hands of did he need a residence? No place built by the hands of man could compare with that which his hands could erect. There is nothing on earth that man can give God which could add to God's glory or increase what he has. The only acceptable sacrifice man can offer is service to the will of God. And God's will is that man should spiritualize himself and improve the earth. Family, if you're listening to this, after this, listen to my um, message that I made, the truth about um, the matrix. You know, um, and it's got a picture, like a collage picture. It's got um, the old guard on it. It's got infinite. It's got um, the eternals on it. Go watch that video, family. A lot of what I'm reading here, like I said, this is my first time reading this. I said in that video, man should spiritualize himself and, and improve the earth. To offer goods or money as a sacrifice is an insult to God. It is shrieking the needful effort, evading the necessary duty and obligation. It is the easy way and not acceptable. God is the refuge of the poor and the comforter of the needy. His compassion encompasses men when troubles weigh heavily upon them. Yet tribulation and adversity, sorrow and suffering are not to be thought of as needless burdens imposed upon the difficulties inseparable from earthly life they are things of value which open the eyes of to truth tempering the spirit as iron is tempered in the flame eloma taught many things and she forbade any man to fornicate with unwed matrons whose silver tongue beguiled and whose winsome ways led men astray she also decreed that men should not fornicate with any maid or another's wife. For none so doing could call himself an honorable man, and such deeds canker the spirit. It was Eloma who taught men the wisdom of the stars, which journeyed according to their destinies. She taught them to interpret the pattern of each man's life, which is woven from the threads of fate and destiny, and interwoven with many colored strands of Enid Vadu. These things were learned and written down by Ishkiga. All right, family. Without further ado, I'm, I'm gonna stop there. Man, it's always a, a like a workout for me reading this book from my mind because it's like even the chapter is literally only two pages long. There's so much information within those two pages that it's like it takes time to read. But anyway, family, as usual, I'm a wise, wealthy, rich, celestial being that is.